But there is not a single young person that wants to be in a gang, that wants to go, into, go to prison, that wants to stab someone, that wants to drug deal, that wants to fail and mess up their whole education. And they may say they want to time and time and time again. And it's about changing that mindset. It's about making every young person here believe that they have the potential to achieve. A really thought-provoking piece there from Jason Farrell. I'm joined now uh, from Sky Centre by Daniel Sobel, who uh, runs a consultancy called uh, Inclusion Expert. He was a, a Senko teacher teaching children with special educational needs and also uh, a former assistant head. Why do you think the numbers of children who are being excluded is going up so quickly at the moment? I'm assuming it has something to do with the need to... Uh, for schools to be able to demonstrate their grades and what they're attaining um, because Ofsted will take that as a, as a primary basis upon which to judge the school. And therefore, if you have a student who seems to be spiralling out with their behaviour, doesn't seem to be on track with uh, behaving, then one of the easiest things to do is to exclude. So that is a key factor. So are schools passing the buck, essentially, in your eyes? I think... Um, that's a very, uh, I'd say, simplistic summary, overly simplistic summary. Um, what, what I think is that schools aren't trained enough to be able to deal with very challenging and vulnerable children. So if you uh, or, or any of us were, were given a job to do, but we simply didn't have the skills or the capacity or the, the training to meet, be able to meet that needs, then it would be unfair to judge, to, to put somebody in that position. So myself and my team have trained good couple of thousand schools and we worked on diminishing exclusion programs with uh, about 50 local authorities or so. Our focus is very much on building skills and understanding of teachers. Um, and with that understanding, they're able to get into more uh, preempting and preventative methods rather than entirely reacting to behaviours. And it is hard for the teachers, isn't it? Because, because on the one hand, they want to do what's right for the child, but they also want to do what's right for the other children in the class and, and balance the needs of, of supporting a child through what might be a difficult patch, but equally not disrupting the education of the rest of them around them. Absolutely. And teachers' hearts... I, I'm a teacher um, in, in my soul, and I, I, I and uh, all of my colleagues' teachers, um, I, I know, uh, do their level best to give every child in their class the, the best possibilities and I agree with one of the speakers who said uh, in, in, the, in the video that um, students need um, to be given a, a, the best education possible and if you have somebody who's distracting the entire classroom then surely it's unfair on everybody else. Now I completely agree with that and I have compassion for that completely and I've seen that and I've experienced it myself. However, um, it, it, ne it needn't necessarily be so. In the vast majority of exclusion cases that myself and my colleagues have been expert witnesses at, um, there were some very simple actions that schools could have taken to have prevented that exclusion from happening. And it boils down to, once again, that simple levels of training. It's not like we don't know what to do, how to include uh, a student with hyperactivity or autistic spectrum and so on and so forth, all different needs. We know what to do, and it's about getting teachers properly trained. OK. Daniel Sobel, I'm afraid we're out of time, but thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to be here live in Harrogate for much of the day. We're going to be talking to some of the pupils here at this referral unit, as well as some of those who are trying to help them get back on the straight and narrow and rejoin mainstream education. More on that and a lot more here on Sky News after this short break. <laughs>